Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, I got a couple things to go over. Um, I sent out some tweets, uh, kind of teasing some progress that I've been making over the past week. Uh, so I'll kind of show some of that off here today. Uh, one of the things uh, that I've been working on is uh, completely uh, doing a ground up review of the DualShock 4 plugin. Uh, it's been a while since I've really looked at it. And some of the changes that I've been making to the core framework have just been kind of being patched in instead of, you know, really thought through. So it's getting, you know, a closer look at to make sure it's running uh, as optimally as it could be, uh, as well as adding some features in and fixing some bugging uh, bugs. Uh, one of the things I'm working on is getting the arrival and uh, removal of the device to uh, be a little more snappy and uh, be more accurate, uh, specifically when turning off the device but leaving the dongle in. Um, I'm trying to get it to recognize that across all the different types of connection methods. Uh, the DualShock 4 dongle is working good. Uh, now I'm working on the Bluetooth, and I've almost got that complete. Um, another thing I'm working on is getting the light bar working. Um, Actually, I've got the light bar working. Uh, only thing I got to do now is add in a device setting uh, into this little drop down menu here that'll allow you to choose between some predefined profiles or even set uh, some of your own options. Um, that's being worked on uh, on another build. Um, it's actually, it doesn't compile all the way because it's still half done, so I'm using a uh, a build from a couple days ago here for my demo purposes. Um, another thing that I have been working on is mapping connectors that do, uh, that, you know, can inject stuff into the light bar value. Uh, for instance, this one uh, is setting the color of the light bar based on the battery level. Um, eventually, this will be actually just a quick option. Uh, it'll be one of the default light bar values, but this is just kind of a good demo as to what you can really do with it. Uh, so what we have is a new connector, which is inject color value. And with these, uh, it's basically you take this value that's coming in and you can tell it to assign it to the green channel um, and then shoot that back out to the light bar. Uh, so what we have there is the battery levels being assigned to the green channel of the light bar. And we also have uh, another, the same battery level is also being assigned to the red channel. Uh, but we have a inversion connector in here. Uh, and what that does is as the battery is at 100%, it'll ramp out the green and ramp in the red uh, and create this kind of like cross blend effect. So. Um, Basically, using that, assign it to the device. Uh, I also have to, it looks like, get rid of the blue value. You can see the blue is kind of pulsing in and out there, and that's because I'm overriding the red and green channels. So what I can do with that is we just need a dummy value, actually. And a connector. Button to access. This so it's zero either way. Check that into the blue and send it back to the light bar. There you go. Now it stays solid green. And I should. I'll figure out a way to actually make it so you don't have to go through that uh, if you want to just override colors. Or basically, if I 
if the source profile on this right now you saw the default is a rainbow if I didn't have that going on if the default was black actually it would work because the blue would always be zero then so that's just something a little bug I got to think about uh, how I'm gonna really get it to override colors like that more easily but as you can see uh, with the flexibility we have here it was easily worked around uh, so light bar DualShock 4 plugin getting a lot of work done um, actually like I said uh, as soon as I finish the UI options, it's pretty much ready for release. Uh, something else that is just about ready for release is I got one of these guys. A couple, to, actually, this is just a box. I got one of these guys uh, a couple days ago, and what this is is a Magic NS, and I'll have the link to the Amazon uh, page for this down below. And what this allows you to do is allows you to pair your DualShock 3 um, to your computer and this will expose it as a direct input device uh, that has HID uh, capabilities which means input mapper can read it without any uh, special plug or without any special drivers or anything for the DualShock 4. Um, Benjamin is still coming up with drivers for this to support it natively in Windows uh, they're still kind of in a beta stage, but as a temporary fix, um, anybody that wants to use their DualShock 3 or also um, this this dongle also supports um, the Nintendo Switch controllers, uh, both the Joy-Cons, the Pro Controller, um, any other controllers they have out. Uh, if it works on Nintendo Switch, supposedly it'll work on this. I've only tested it on the Joy-Cons. Those work fine. Um, obviously DualShock 3 devices. Uh, this will also support any kind of like off-brand or uh, like the Pro uh, series, DualShock 3s, DualShock 4s as well. Um, so if you have a Pro or a competition DualShock 4 and you've been asking me to incorporate support for it, uh, this will allow basic support. Um, meaning uh, you know all your inputs your buttons and joysticks and all that stuff will work um, what will not work is the touchpad will not work the light bar will not work um, audio support will not work um, so that's the downside to this if you want to use it for the DualShock 4s but you will if you do have the controller laying around and you just want to have to if you want to be able to use it with your PC without having to buy a separate controller for it it'll work for your basics um, your DualShock 4 if you have a uh, like an off-brand or a pro series or anything like that um, I would recommend getting one of these and this is the official PlayStation dongle and this does everything including allowing um, it'll allow audio support uh, it keeps the trackpad um, pretty much uh, your light bar it'll keep that uh, so anything that your DualShock 4 you expect it to do will work with your computer with this um, it makes pairing and signal quality a lot easier uh, it also increases the distance and uh, yeah just overall I love this thing issue with it is most people didn't understand it they thought it was a Bluetooth device so it really didn't get accepted very well not many people bought it so there's not many of them floating around out there um, it can be found on Amazon um, I'll try to put a recent link to it uh, from what I can find at least for the US I'll put a recent link that I can find down in the description below um, but inflation is really taken over on these um, I think I bought this one for I'm gonna say 16 17 dollars something like that um, and I've been seeing them now for like $30 uh, even up to 40 something like that which is really unfortunate because uh, people didn't understand really what this thing was for or what it what it really did for us and it's great um, I was lucky to get one when I did as a matter of fact I wish I'd gotten a few more so I could use multiple controllers uh, because that's the downfall of both of these is or one of the downfalls um, it's one con one dongle for one controller uh, but as far as I can tell you can have as many of these plugged in as you want 
So if you have multiple controllers, you get multiple of these, and I believe it works fine. Uh, so, um, actually, I haven't had a chance to test that yet, but from what I see when I'm snooping the hardware, um, when I'm snooping the hardware signals is they all show up under different handles, uh, so there's no reason the input mapper would uh, confuse them with each other. They're all, they all have unique identifiers, so um, that's about it. Um, like I said, uh, a lot of cool stuff that I've been developing, uh, a few things to show off. I got to round a couple things out, uh, and then I'll be able to get a new build out to you guys. Um, I know I am really want to get this one out in a hurry because I know the last one had some uh, bugs that I overlooked regarding the mapping, um, where if you had several mapping overrides, they didn't really play nice with each other. Um, that was just a stupid, silly little bug on my end, and I was able to fix it really quick, but until I get this kind of a little bit more rounded out, um, it's hard for me to push it to you guys, so, uh, that's about it, guys. A lot of cool progress being made, and a beta build is in the future. Alright, guys, have a good one.